Yes, the complete Python project for cybersecurity is back and it still has been going underway for the last six weeks, I think. Briefly before I start the video, I just want to say that I am completing the complete Python series uh, for cybersecurity. Was really busy the last five, six weeks of school. I had to come up with some excuses. I had a lot of projects to work on. I would come go in sporadic waves and that's not, not a good idea. Not a good idea. That's probably the worst thing to do when you're trying to learn something new. I decided to go ahead and nix out one of the plural site courses, the fundamentals or whatever, the intermediate series. R really just way too fast. The authors were not Fantastic. So I went ahead and just worked on the Station X um, Python for Cybersecurity by Zaid. Uh, he's a fantastic author. Had a lot to think about uh, within the Python course. So that's it. Enjoy the video. It's going to continue to be published out. Maybe uh, not as consistent as I thought it would be, but it's still here. Enjoy the video. Do you have those moments where you're just about to begin a course or something and you realize you just have so much work to do regarding this course or whatever it is? Well, that's the situation I am at right now with the Python level two for the complete cybersecurity project. Let me go ahead and give you a little bit of detail before I dive into the project. I have decided to nix out a course uh, from the plural site. It was the intermediate path for just general Python. And I have decided to go ahead and just learn off of one course uh, titled Learn Python Ethical Hacking from Scratch. Really, it primarily focuses on Python. Some things that I'm looking forward to is learning kind of just the security perspective of how Python is used. I've done some scripting in Python, but nothing that's necessarily security specific. I'm looking forward to seeing um, the ways that Python is differentiates between something like creating an API or using a web framework like Django, for instance instance, I don't know, just seeing the security's perspective. I've looked through the course curriculum. There's just, there's a ton of programs we'll be creating. Let's go ahead and get started with module one, video one. Whew, I have a lot of work to do regarding this level two. Well, you gotta get started somehow. Whoop. All right, that's it, that's it. I just finished bypassing HTTPS section. It's about halfway through the course and it's four videos long. It's not that long. The, the key takeaways I just got from this module was that you could actually bypass HTTPS. Through the power of Python, you are able to uh, at least try to bypass HTTPS. We use a uh, third party library um, incorporated through GitHub. Now uh, the HTTPS bypassing has to be dealt under certain circumstances. There is so much capability with Python. I've said that before, but I never really knew that you could even do so much within the security aspect of Python. I know you could do it with generally everything, but there is so many different modules. When anything from um, website hacking, to writing malware, to getting into the network, to uh, establishing foothold or laterally moving, there's all kinds of aspects you can do with Python. I'm about eh, halfway through the course, haven't really documented much, but I thought I would go ahead and say that. So let's get Boof. That was super cringy. Let's get uh, on to the, the next one. Okay, I just finished the basic keylogger program. Uh, it did not take that long to write, and I'm just gonna briefly break it down. So let's turn to the computer. All right, so pulling up our little Python program here. Basically all we do is we import a module called Pi input keyboard. We initialize a keyboard listener and we join our keystrokes together. And then we have a function which processes the keys and puts it in a log. Very simple, not many lines of code here. So I'm gonna briefly show you how this works. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and put run our keylogger program here. It's going to listen for new keystrokes. We have a new terminal up here, and we're just gonna say this is a test, 
And if we go back to our initial terminal, we will find that all of our keystrokes are logged. Now, one of the challenges, one of the things I already see that's kind of annoying about this program is that's a lot of log to read. So parsing that down into usable data is definitely gonna be something that I hope we learn here. But just look at how easy it is to import, uh, write a few lines of code and boom, you already have Keylogger open. It's just, it's crazy. looks a little orangey, looks a little orange. Okay, so I am finished with the complete Python project for cybersecurity level two. That was a handful of a name right there. This course took me a long time to finish. It took me like five weeks as I had introduced in the uh, intro, whatever. Zaid, the course author, does a great job of uh, explaining, which takes a lot more time. Some key takeaways from this course, as I had, uh, in, you know, I had mentioned in the video earlier, the modules uh, or using third-party libraries is really important when it comes to Python. But I didn't really know the the importance or how much of an importance it was. The second takeaway was that we create a lot of many projects uh, that could have some very powerful capabilities. Um, we started with some basic ARP spoofer DNS, and then we went on to even just bypassing HTTP. HTTP, HTTPS, uh, we, did, we created a backdoor, a vulnerability scanner, uh, we did a web cr website crawler, so we did a whole bunch of projects, there, there's a lot more that I, I didn't just say there. Number three was the biggest takeaway. It's a lot easier than I thought to build the programs that he built. Now, of course, I'm learning from an expert within the industry, so of course this author, for instance, knows what he's doing. but. Oh my goodness, I, I didn't know how easy it was to create, for instance, a Trojan. Um, here, here, let me go ahead and just show you what I mean by uh, a Trojan. So I have Kali up and I've created this script here, or I rather, I, I just copied it. So with a program, uh, Wine, we can go ahead and create the Py installer, right? So we have, we have to, whenever you install Py, Python, you have to do a .exe to install it, whatever. So we compile the Py installer with a front file, and behind it is this Py installer, okay? It's with one file, so that means it's gonna be have that front of the PDF and the back of the Py installer, no console, meaning whenever you double click a Python program, the console comes up and, and then once you X out of it, it, it flashes back. Um, that means it's not gonna have any counsel. Then finally, we put the reverse backdoor.py uh, program. So basically what this does is it's gonna install Python if it's not already pre-installed, which you, know, you have to install Python to run the script. And then you can like act like you're doing whatever, you know, go into this PDF, but actually we have a reverse backdoor or a backdoor connection um, with this PDF. So whenever the person opens it, we have a backdoor connection and we have access to his computer via the command line. So like that's a really quick example, a really br quick breakdown of what you can do um, within this course. I, mean, I understand, you know, people make fun of me for being, you know, whatever, a newbie, but I never really dabbled with this side of the security. Really a big props to Zaid for compiling this course. I highly recommend that you go check this out either um, uh, on Station X or on his website, zsecurity.org. So that is it for Python 2, the complete complete Python project for level two cybersecurity. Nail that one down. Um, yeah, if you have any questions, just let me know. Uh, and let's get on to project two, which is building a keylogger. This will be interesting. See you in the next video.